Hello, drone zombies. My name's Bob, and I'm an aspiring drone pilot. Uh, figured we'd do a review of the uh, Sharper Image DX2. Uh, indoor outdoor drone. Uh, I'm still learning, but it's a it's an interesting field of endeavor. Uh, <coughs> I'm sorry. Full disclosure. Uh, this is actually the third drone in a series. The first one was a DX1. Lost a motor, uh, so I returned it. Uh, was able to step up to this one, which the review from Flying Ryan in on YouTube uh, said was a much better drone. So I decided to take a look at this. Uh, the first DX2 that I bought had a battery issue where instead of uh, giving me a low battery indication flashing lights and then setting down on its own it would simply start flashing and then fall out of the sky so I returned it and now we have our third drone our second DX2 and this one does fairly well um, I'll go through it real quick I'm gonna skip the unboxing as you can see I've already got it all unboxed uh, this is the drone itself. As you can see, I've already got the rotor guards on. Uh, the rotor guard attaches with screws here, here, right there, and right there. Uh, it does take a jeweler screwdriver to get them on there. As you can see, the body style is nice. I like the look. Uh, there's the charging port right there and the power switch for the drone itself is right there on the bottom also included in the box are small hardware package with the uh, rudder guard attachment screws extra propellers Operations manual, drone, power cord, remote. Some of the things that aren't included in the package that come in very, very handy are six AA batteries, small jeweler screwdriver here for attaching the rotor guard, and a USB charger. Do a quick pre flight. No damage. Rotors all turn free, no obstructions. So let's go ahead and get everything working. First, turn on the drone, and you get white lights on the front, red lights on the rear. Then we're going to pair the drone and the remote. Turn the remote on, get three or four little beeps there, then we're going to take the throttle all the way up and all the way back. That pairs the drone and the remote. Uh, according to Fly and Ryan, the next step would be to calibrate the accelerometer and the gyro by pulling both sticks down and out like this. Get another beep and that should do it. see we do have everything we need. Next step is take it out and fly. All right the goal is to lift off, establish a hover and get it trimmed out and do a little bit of flying. So here we go. Try to 
get the hover established. See this way it's going. There we go. A little too much. There we go. Fly down to the end of the room. Try to keep it a little bit lower. The pirouette here, real quick. And forward. Trim just went a little bit screwy on me. Trims are really off for some reason. <laughs> My landing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no landing, but not a bad flight. Whoopsies. <laughs> you can stop now. <laughs> Under the couch. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Banking turn, yes. Okay. Without crashing. Ooh, oh, I missed. missed. And battery's dead. Okay. All right, everybody. In conclusion, a couple of things I wanted to say. The controller itself is 
a little bit clunky in the hands. Uh, I've learned that I'm a lot more sensitive on the controls using a pinch method rather than a thumb method. Thumb method I tend to over control and get a little glitchy. But pinching I, I tend to have a little bit better throttle control. Uh, as far as uh, lifetime of the batteries go I'm not sure yet. On the drone itself um, no real issues with it. Uh, one a few things I did notice that it's very crisp on the roll uh, very crisp on yaw turns uh, the uh, the pitch itself seems to be a little washed out maybe a little damped uh, but it, it does fairly well uh, battery life on the drone itself I'm getting about 10 minutes of flight so that's not too bad at all although the charging time leaves something to be desired it's usually about an hour uh, a couple of statements about the marketing on the box uh, auto orientation uh, audio auto orientation is basically flying in headless mode uh, auto landing works pretty well but the suggested auto landing uh, altitude is about 35 feet and as I'm using this as an indoor drone, uh, that's not going to really work for me. Uh, 360 degree stunt rolls works great. Very crisp rolls. Very crisp rolls. Uh, one other thing. Uh, if you're going to use this outside, make sure you use it on a windless day. Uh, it's very susceptible to wind being, uh, being as light as it actually is. I had it out today, uh, maybe a, it, it was a fairly, uh, it was a light wind with some gusts. I got it up about 15 or 20 feet and it started to be blown. The wind got it and just blew it straight away from me. And at full throttle and full pitch, uh, I was barely, barely staying stable. I wasn't making any headway against the wind until the wind let up. Uh, so I'd, I'm going to confine this to an indoor drone unless it's a very, very calm day. Anyway, guys, uh, my opinion of the Sharper Image DX2 stunt drone, it's a good one. I'm pretty pleased with it for, for the price, for $30. Give you a lot of stick time sitting on the couch. You can't beat that. All right, guys, uh, this is Bob saying happy flying.